Well, hey guys, today on the bench, we have this control board. This is from a RCBS Universal Case Prep Center, as seen in the video clip above. And we do know that this control board had reverse polarity applied across it. We absolutely see a surface mount dough that has blown the trace off. And we could definitely repair this with a new flat pack diode or surface mount diode here. But I'm probably just either going to um, look at doing this side or this side. Just putting an axial diode across. Probably no need to actually repair the trace since it is completely damaged. But since this trace is blown and even though that diode is shorted, we know that that's not the only problem with this board because it had quit working. So no doubt that's shorted, but it is completely open. We can probably just take this diode off completely with very little issues. So the next thing we want to look at is this looks like it's a variable speed output or a variable voltage output to what seems to be a motor load. And since we know that this short across the input power, we can take that diode off completely. And at this point, we can um, come over and safely apply voltage to test what a power supply i actually have the 24 volt dc adapter that goes to this but when i'm testing i always put my current limited supply on here so i have a one and a half amp limited supply here we saw a small arc that charged the cap but we at 0.1 amp so we're fine nothing's heating up if we go to the output we're getting almost the same output as we're putting in. I do know that I had this potentiometer cut all the way down and even off. This actually has a switch built in. I click it forward and we rise up to about our full input level. There's very little change here. So right off the bat, I believe that this little regulator chip, the little switcher, must be shorted. Before I take it off though, I'm going to have the data sheet up here so we can look at this pinout. We have a typical application, which the typical application they're showing here is for a 5 volt. And the chip here is a LM2677S and it's a S adjust. So this is going to be an adjustable, hence the potentiometer input, right? So we can get these fixed or adjustable. So as we look at the pinout here for this to263 package our pin 4 is going to be our ground our own off control is going to come on pin 7 which we just clicked all the way the transistor is giving us a zero or zero volts if i rotate this we're getting six volts so we are getting our enable and our disable So even though this is putting out when we got it turned off, we know that this switcher is still putting out. Obviously we're getting 22 volts out. Our feedback is gonna come back on pin six, which is gonna be our, on this one's gonna be our adjustment. And we see with it all the way counterclockwise, we get a higher voltage. And as we rotate it clockwise, like we're turning it up, our voltage goes down. So that's because that's our feedback. And that would make it speed up or put out more. As we go closer to the input level voltage, especially if we click it off and the transistor cuts off, we should be getting no output. But of course we still are. Show you again, there's been no change on that. So I'm certain that transistor is, is working fine because our, our zero to six volts for enable and disable is working. I have probed around on that transistor and this diode and they're fine. So this board is relatively simple. It just has that switcher chip on board that controls the, the variable voltage. So it's a switcher that does that variable switching or variable voltage output based on an internal, internal fixed frequency oscillator of 260 kilohertz. We could also um, externally provide a clock range, but this one apparently is just using the internal uh, 260 kilohertz internal fixed 
frequency oscillator. So I think I'm gonna um, heat up the soldering iron and try to get this off and see what we can do with it today. I am gonna use my 150 watt soldering iron. Such a large uh, thermal pad on the back of this chip. There we go. I got the big pad lifted off. Just go over doing one pin at a time. Just don't want to lift no pads. We are all lifted. <clears throat> Just gotta hit this corner that's stuck back down on the main base here. We should come right off. There we go. So back now, I'm just gonna clean these pads up some. Pads are cleaned up fairly well. Still got some um, flux on there. I'll clean it up when I'm done. I'm gonna put a little bit of the low temperature um, solder paste under this pad for the new replacement chip we have. The five amp high efficiency uh, switch. From miles of this comes with a little silica gel as well as a moisture indicator. Pretty neat. So we have the main base of the chip. That tab is soldered well. I'm just gonna make sure I get these all seven of these leads soldered down to the pads good. Put a little bit on the tip. We got one bridge here. There we go, that looks pretty good. So there's a close up before I clean it up. I'm also gonna clean this spot up pretty good.
So that's what we look like cleaned up. I just have to put a diode across here and we'll be ready to go with it. So I'm going to mount this diode like so for the reverse polarity protection. And this is a thousand volt three amp diode. So let's give it a shot. Make sure this is all the way off. So the cool thing is after this capacitor charged up, we're showing zero current. So this light, this truly is off. We have zero volts. We cut it on, look at there. That's our variable, the 22.5. And back down to off. Well, there we go. That little switcher chip, along with the diode, just to make sure the protection is there. It did fix this board. And actually, this is one of those applications where the chip cost almost as much as something we could have retrofitted. I did a video a while back on this little Yiko, and I think Drock makes one similar as well. It's just a little DC to DC uh, buck converter. So we could easily take our 24 volts in and switch it with that pot switch on and off and just wire up where this potentiometer is for voltage. Just wire that potentiometer in there to vary this up to 24 volts out. And with this, we can even set our current if we would like to do a current control or CC control and actually have a digital readout of the output as well. So these little boards, I believe up under that heat sink, it's been a while, but I think it's a very similar chip, switching chip. And for the price point of about 15 bucks, you can buy the whole board. And that's about what I spent on the parts because I only bought one and I had to pay for shipping because the only thing I could find online was, was lots of five to 50. And um, even though it was cheaper per item, I only needed one. So the electronics component warehouses, they, they kind of get you with the shipping. I mean, they do a really good job with the shipping and taking care of the components, but, but you do pay for that difference for sure. But just thought I would mention for that application that something like this DC to DC converter would actually get you by on a little motor controller like that. So if you like this video today, looking at replacing this switcher chip on this little driver board. Please like, share, subscribe, and thanks for watching.